Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Hi, two lights in the darkness are back again. And our special guest tonight is Jennifer Asidao Kirubin, who is a mindset manifestation coach specialized in energetics. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you good for to having have me. you. Thank well, you. Uh, we Thank actually so should should tell the audience maybe that we had you before and that something went wrong with the recording. It just vanished into thin air. So we're glad to have you back again. <laughs> it exists somewhere in the ether, right? <laughs> it does. <laughs> it <the> does. <laughs> Thank you. It was such a great conversation, but we can start it over again. Absolutely. So. Jennifer, who yeah. are you? And tell us about the energetics and mindset and, and manifestation. What's the oh, combo? Yeah. The combo? That's a great question. Um, so in this lifetime, I am Jennifer Cito Caribbean. <laughs> As you, yes. For those of you who have been to I love that. Lives. Um, and I'll be come back. So Getting right into it, like with manifestation, um, we, everything in the universe is moving in and out of form. And what moves into form is what we observe. So it's taking a deeper dive into what do I observe, not just with what I think, but what I feel. And what I'm, I'm actually gonna do a live on this pretty soon. Uh, I, I was just writing how I think majority of people are very emotionally suppressed because when I asked them, you know, throughout their day or what's going on with them, like, so what, what were you feeling at the time, right? Like maybe they feel stuck with defining their program or they feel stuck with whatever. And I asked them, well, what do you feel that's kind of like the precursor to the stuckness? And the first thing they're going to tell me is what they think or what they're doing at the time, but they don't tell me what they feel. Yeah. So it's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. So energetics is a very much about emotional intelligence. Yeah. Very much about yeah. that. But it's also looking at the soul's journey. Like, you know, we we have reoccurring patterns and I would, I interpret it personally as like karmic patterns. Yeah. And we keep on experiencing it because we still have to learn something on the soul level. Yeah to evolve right so when we can kind of come to more conscious awareness of what that pattern is like who am i my identity in this pattern how can i slip out of it energetically by assuming a more evolved identity yeah then the manifestation along with clearing of the emotional body their wounds and traumas there's more flow of energy going on different levels of consciousness you know like we have the mental we have the spiritual soul level emotional we have the solar plexus you have the kundalini levels of consciousness yeah so in my in my journey what happened is i didn't realize how blocked my emotional level of consciousness was until i was led you know um by this great intelligence to the right modalities and how to heal myself and then help other people do the same right that's so cool huh I yeah I, I did that's my passion energy energetics and and healing and looking at blockages how how do they um yeah. what's their origin and why do we keep them in our energetic bodies um mm. and make why do they make us sick yeah right right, right. so but back to the the energetics and manifestation because that's a different kind of um looking at it i think mm -hmm. so a lot of people um complain about manifestations i'm manifesting i don't know what but i'm manifesting something and it doesn't work for me manifesting right. just doesn't work for me right right so what happens then? Why doesn't it work for them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
usually it's because the heart and mind coherence isn't there yeah so they can and it's we have to move beyond the mental body and move more into like the emotional body and move into other parts of our consciousness in order to to really manifest and usually they're being triggered out of the feeling of that reality that they want of that manifestation and are being triggered out of it unconsciously they're being triggered out of it so that's like again it goes back to the emotional intelligence and yeah. really paying attention so if you think about trauma right like when we experience these traumatic experiences like we we pop out of our bodies we disassociate yeah right because of the pain of it so i realize that people have to come back to their bodies and and reintegrate and then we have different unconscious parts of our personalities that we're not even aware yeah. of, but they pop up along the journey and we have to speak to them. Why that is difficult, huh? Yeah. Um, well, I think well, it comes just with, with mindfulness and yeah. it. I think, and it, this is my own personal like uh, assessment of the, situ of the situation and, and working with folks that they will show themselves and these wounds will show themselves when they're ready to be healed. Right. But you don't want to force it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, you know, and sometimes you can't help but have that happen because I know it happened to me and it was a trigger that went off and um and it just automatically just sent all my uh past trauma and everything that was suppressing for 50 years just flooded like all at the same time up to the surface and it felt like an erupting volcano and I had no you know way to like protect myself from it and it was just too overwhelming and it just shut my body right down mm -hmm. yeah yeah what this is what happens too right so let's say we get triggered and I think more mainstream manifestation is okay. Well, if you're feeling negative, then just think positive. You know, just yeah. just think the yes. other way. The other way. But what happens is that part of us that's wounded gets even more suppressed, and then there's yeah. another part of us that's just going after this achievement or going after this manifestation. But there are two parts of us that are becoming more of a chasm within us. Ah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we need to. So it, like, for example, with that eruption, like in my own practice and, and working with folks, the first thing that needs to be done is to come to emotional neutrality. That's the first thing. Even before you can start creating something different, if the nervous system is, you know, so triggered, we got to come to emotional neutrality and we can use the physical body to do that. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you do that with your clients? I implement the EFT method with emotional freedom <gasps> tapping because it really yeah. just calms people down, right? And then at that point, because it really is all about, it's funny because a lot of people think it's all about the positivity and, and it is, it's very important, but ultimately the main goal is just peace. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of us do not have because there's so much going on in their lives and no time and no time oh. to for themselves to do something yeah. for themselves. Right. Yeah. I just I filmed a video um for my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and right before coming in, my husband pops in and because <laughs> we're editing everything. And one of the videos I talk about why meditation is important yeah especially in this modern world because we're being stimulated so much yeah that yeah. our brain waves are in high beta yeah. and if we're in high beta all the time we don't access universal mind no because we, we access, access in in alpha and theta and mind yes yeah mind and we can induce it by meditation right so it's yeah. almost like in today's modern world it's almost like 
it's kind of a, 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 a must in terms of practice or in terms of like a new habit if we really want to be conscious creators yeah in our lives all or it's going to be all the advertisements it's going to be the internet it's going to be like everything else is going to you know it's going to create for us yeah exactly yeah <laughs> because we're too busy trying to keep up with Ch everything Ch 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 gpt <laughs> Chat gpt ai will oh my god will create for us that's crazy oh my god just the thought of that oh my god yeah yeah, yeah but that's true huh? but do you find that people um nowadays are open to to that kind of change in their life to incorporate uh, mindfulness and meditation and, and energetics i do because i feel like in, in kind of like in a, in a grander scheme of things i feel like there's this wave of like you know there's there's a revelation with like the secret right mm -hmm. like i don't know what came out like in the 90s and so people are yeah. opening up to like oh my god there's there's a connection between thought and matter Let's put it that way. And then yeah. you've got like more information about quantum physics, you know, the new thought movement. And I feel like people have kind of like, they've learned that and now they're ready for the next stage. They're ready for like the next evolution. Yeah. 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 So Jennifer, you had mentioned earlier about the out-of-body out of experience. Have you ever had an out-of-body experience? that last time out of body like yeah i um yeah you, is, okay, you mean not not like in when you have a trauma trauma that you go that you pop out but right in your sleep or that, is that what you mean ellie like um, a, actually oh. when you do have a trauma and then you step out of you actually see your body floating above you oh i have not experienced that well, i will tell you i in my journey so i this is in the heart of the, the height of the pandemic, I should say. I was attending um, these classes at a yoga studio and we would arrive, if I remember correctly, at six in the morning to do this meditation, okay? And I am so devoted. I'm like, yep, I'm there because <laughs> I'm <laughs> on a healing journey, right? So, and when we did this meditation, this is the revelation I had. I didn't realize how much I was popping out of my body. Because when I grounded in my body, my thoughts became centered. So what do you mean so by I'm, that? Just for people that don't right. don't know about mm -hmm. this this matter, this this um yes. So if you notice people who are kind of scattered with their thoughts, right? And maybe they're super chatty. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I realize this because their energy is stuck from here up. But it's not flowing here. Right. Because there's a, there's a disconnection with the with the physical body. So when I was connecting more by working with like the first and second chakras, I realized that my thoughts became so orderly. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And it's because I was grounding in my body. And I was also opening up my heart space too. Yeah. So, uh, and when I work with my clients and I realize that's what's happening to them, that if they're super chatty, and what's funny is unconsciously, they try to like, move, they try to um, not stay on topic when I'm talking to them. I yeah. notice this. OK, yeah. and it's 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 your unconscious mind like, no, I don't want to change. The unconscious mind is like there's a part of the hidden part of the personality that doesn't want to change, doesn't want yeah. to have the transformation. So change I have to like, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I witnessed it too. Um, and so, yeah, the, the out of body experience I was referring to was like when I was younger, mm. I was about 13. Um, 12 or 13 and I remember I wanted to go to the dance that my older sister was going to we, we went to the same school but she's just in a higher grade and she got all the boys and I got none and so I wanted mm -hmm. to go to this dance and I had my whole heart set on it and I went you know 
my, my mom and dad, of course, said, no, you're too young, you can't go. Well, my, you know, watch my sister go and leave with her boyfriend and everything. And I'm just sick and disheartened as a teenager would be. And I'm in my bed and it's time to go to sleep. And I remember seeing my body floating up, uh, over me. And I, I remember like, like being that, like the dance, but then it, it just kind of went away um, the next day. And then I met up with one of my friends the next day and she said, well, that was a pretty good dance, right? And I said, huh? And she goes, mm -hmm. she goes, you were there. And I'm like, I was. And she goes, yeah, I saw you, you were there. And I was like, whoa, I got chills. And I was like, whoa, what heck, you know, how did that happen? I was like there and then I was sleeping in my bed and it was like, whoa. Time wow. Passed now. Right, yeah, right. Erna, I'm sure that you have insights on this, but what what it sounds like is you astrally traveled there. That's what yeah. I'm sensing by what you're describing. And this friend of yours must have some sort of psychic ability where she sensed right. you there. She saw yeah, you right. there. So maybe right, her right. third eye was open and, and actually saw you there. That's that's how yeah. I interpret what exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like an empath or something like she yeah had that mm -hmm. that um extra sensory or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you're yeah. not physically there and when you when you travel in your astral body people don't see you but you mm -hmm. can see like everything right. so and then yeah if someone is very um very sensitive or psychic they mm -hmm. they can sense you they can see you uh, so yeah so it's like the but it's the intention that you said you were you wanted with your whole heart and body to be at yeah. that at that yeah. that dance uh -huh. And you thought yeah. about it so, the intention was set so, so strongly just before you go to sleep. And that's mm -hmm. the, that's the point that you can just mm -hmm. go, go off and, uh, yeah. and travel. Yeah. I'm even like getting chills now just talking about, because that's how much I wanted it. You know, I just remember you know, that desire and that, you know, I just, you know, I got, you know, what I got to be. You know, Ali, I feel, this is what is what's coming through. It's like, well, if I can't physically go there, my astral body is going to go there. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, like there's a part of your consciousness that was like, okay, fine. I can't go physically. I'm going to go there in my astral body. Hey, you know, it's funny. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. But that's, yeah. that's actually how a lot of um, healers work. And, and if you go back to um, indigenous people, shamans yeah. they work yes. like that mm. they go to their patients in their astral body and work with them or they learn what they need to do in their astral bodies yes interesting yeah. yes and, and my that. understanding is in the astral that's where we create first and then it manifests in the third dimension or in the in the physical so that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah in that yeah, but I think we, we're sort of diverting from from. I love this. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing. It's very fascinating. Yes, yes. Yeah. But so yeah, like, yeah. yeah. We always talk at the same time. Uh, so yeah, um, like even when like the uh, patients are like like dying, they're on the like the table, you know, and they're dying. I've heard yeah. stories of how they could see themselves rising up above. They're they're leaving their body. And they're, you know, they're in like a whole new dimension. They're seeing the light or whatever. Um, and that's like another out of body experience. So, um, so I was a nurse for 20 years mm -hmm. and oh. I started, yes. And I started on a cancer floor early, very early in my, in my, and I realized in hindsight, I was being prepared for what I do now. Right. Yeah. Because that in the real, I was experiencing, you know, people who are physically here, but they weren't fully here anymore. Yeah. They were partly in the, the spirit realm because mm -hmm. their, their, you know, their dead loved ones would come and visit. Yeah. yeah. And were you able to see them as well? 
the the dead loved ones no not no. not okay. me but the, the patients would verbalize oh auntie auntie or mama or you know father's here you know and then like the and the the physical loved ones at the bedside are like wait they passed like five years ago so they're witnessing this too yeah and this is a true story and i realized like i was i was i also started my spiritual journey back in 2001 um where uh it was revealed to me who my spirit guides are and and at the same time here i am in a nursing profession and it was like the biggest like classroom ever yeah to you know to experience these things um in that setting like in a hospital setting yeah um yeah and yeah and I realized because I you could see the different levels of consciousness I, I was also witnessing how the mind played a big role in how well patients heal right and I was also seeing how, oh, there's a chronic, you know, thought and feeling of lack of love for themselves and also for other people, which was yeah. manifesting in disease processes, Yeah, you know, in their physical body. So I was, I was kind of like seeing these things and putting two and, you know, putting the, the puzzle the together, dots together. Yeah. Yeah. In my head. It was, and it was incredibly difficult at the same time. It was a very difficult school to be in. And that's where I I did transition out of that and into like what I do now, which is kind of like, it's just a different application really, right? Like yeah. it's mm -hmm. similar, but it's in a different type of application. Cause at least when you deal with like the, the, mainstream medical establishment it's very drug driven yeah yeah and you know if you're empathic and if you are more spiritually along the path like that doesn't that does not sit well with you anymore with your spirit it doesn't no. because no. You're, you're giving all these you know drugs and then people have side effects and then you give more drugs to deal with the side effects and it's like you just you can't see that type of suffering over and over and over again without it no, like right. breaking you down. So that's where it's like I transitioned, I really moved over. And I, I, I'm grateful to my guides who helped me, you know, to um, to find what the alternative model is. Because I came from a whole family of nurses and medical people. And that's yeah. all that my family knew. You know, yeah. I had no reference for creativity. I had no reference for, um, uh, for business in any way. So I had to like, I had to be guided to it. Yeah. Wow. And thank God. Thank God it was. Yeah. 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 But that's the thing. Huh? It's your purpose in life. But sometimes you do have to learn before you can step into that new version of you that transformed version of you that can fully live your purpose true true yes that's Thank amazing that. yeah but i think that's that's true you know it's like what you said that your spirit just doesn't um can't take the the giving the drugs to people anymore you know in your heart that we have this body, mind, and soul, spirit, unity. But we yeah. are taught that it's not a unity. Right. So also right. with like um, energetics, energy healing. Yes. We cannot, we are, we are taught not to trust it. Right. We need to go to the drugs first. Yes. And you know, it's what was amazing is I had a, a session with a client yesterday and she has a lot of chronic issues and just through the healing and moving of the energy she told me that she had chronic um ear infections all the time and she would implement everything that doctors told her and now it's it's gone oh so, that's so good. oh isn't that I was yeah. like oh and she's like I'm so excited, like just, just to like continue with this journey because I'm, I'm feel like literally your physical body is responding yeah. to the and to the movement of the stuck 
emotion. That's really what it is, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it's a stuck emotion. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's what blockages are. Stuck emotions. Yeah. Right, right. Because that's also what trauma basically is. It's a exactly. huge emotion of something that happened to you and that that gave you an emotional meaning or you gave it an emotional meaning that's stuck in your in your aura mm -hmm. and then your chakras and mm -hmm. yes you know, and and i think what's very important is to uh, conscientiously heal once we identify and it's through memory it's through memory identify that memory and we conscientiously heal it yeah. and i think that a big part of this i've just been content like thinking about this that we take such full responsibility yeah. for this feeling, you know, instead of waiting for something to happen, mm -hmm. you know, waiting for something outside of us to, to make us whole, like we make ourselves whole. It's between us exactly. and God, it's between us and the universe. It's be you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. that's the most empowering path to take. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was this, I don't know, um, what's her name? Um, Diane Gannon or Donna, Donna Cannon or... Um, oh, Dolores Cannon. Uh, Dolores. Dolores. Yeah, Dolores. Yes. Yes. And yes. she said, and I so agree with her, we make ourselves sick. It's, it's yeah. us that make ourselves sick. And yeah. I think that's true. Yes. Because yeah. we don't I we don't that. trust it our body and our, our, our the unity anymore. So we're lost. Yeah. And well, I just I want to share like this reminds me of I me mean, I was reading, I was doing some research on India. And um this woman who wrote a book about traveling there, she had a, a section where she goes it's really interesting because when you look at the Ganges River, right, they have bodies that have passed away and yeah. they just let them flow into the Ganges and people drink the water from the Ganges, but they yeah. don't get sick. So why is that? So there's, there's a, a very interesting, something that we don't quite yet understand about how powerful our consciousness is in relation to our bodies and healing. Yeah, that's amazing. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Ellie, I've I've been watching you. Did you want to say something? No, no, I'm just. Oh, okay, kind of, okay. I'm just mesmerized. I'm just thinking, you know, like the things that she's brought up, and um, you know, and and it's very intricate. All this. You know, um, yeah. the system, the, the body, you know, and I love that you um, address the drug issue because that is one of my pet peeves. And, you know, I'm totally holistic and I have so many holistic friends like Erna. And the worst thing you can do is take a drug. Like you said, it has side effects. It's going to compound with whatever's wrong with you. Yeah. And you're going to just be in a vicious cycle all your life if you don't get off those medications. Um, they're very addicting. Yeah. And and the pharmaceutical system just wants to push, 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 push. You see it on every commercial on TV. And um, it's a very serious um, thing that needs to be addressed uh, today, too. You know, it's just yeah. Uh, yeah. getting worse and worse. Yep. Wow. I could I could talk to you for hours, Jennifer. No, I could talk to you for hours as well. Or no. <laughs> this is just that. so cool. This is just so cool. Well, I feel, yeah, like, I feel like the, the world is moving in this direction too. You know, like I think the yeah. world is really calling for truth and um just you know real holistic living. Yeah. Fulfillment. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so, because it's, uh, it's a different world when you live like that, I think. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So if people want to know to find you, Jennifer. If people, oh, thank 
Well, if people want to find me, <laughs> they can go to my website. It's called reachyourhighestpotential.com. And my link is working for connecting with me there. And I have a YouTube channel I'm launching. I just filmed 13 videos. I'm gonna film 17 more. My goal was 30 this month. I'm on, I'm on track. Um, oh. Yeah, so just, just uh, Reach Your Highest Potential is the, the channel on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and uh, they can reach me at Jen, J-E-N-N, -N, at reachyourhighestpotential.com, which is my email. So they can also oh. email me as well. And it's all one word, all spelled out. Reach your highest potential. Ooh, okay, <laughs> okay. Reach your. <laughs> but just out of curiosity, the the yeah. YouTube videos, the thirty YouTube videos. What are they about? Well, reach your highest potential. But yes, yes, I talk about. I t well, what? Okay, this is what inspired it at first. I came up, I had this very strong intu intuitive hit to create a negative thought habit tracker tool, right? As a giveaway. Oh. And it's very subtle. It's a very subtle, um, highlighted by Andrew Carnegie as he was being interviewed by Napoleon Hill in the oh. book, Mental Dynamite. And when I did that, I'm like, wow, I didn't even realize these unconscious negative programs were in me. And I'm like, let me create like a, um, a, a tool for other people. So I did. And so it's very subtle. So I drew inspiration from look, uh, taking a deeper dive into these, these automatic programs in us. And I started just talking about it on the oh. videos. And then with that stream of consciousness, I'm like, oh, then let me talk about this. And let me talk about that. And let me talk about, you know, like how to cultivate faith and, you know, like, like really goal setting that will really open up a person spiritually yeah, and not just intellectually, you know, and not just ego in the ego sense, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in, their, in a more like, you know, spiritual and, and soul sense, you know? So those are the, the type of topics that I, oh, that I, that, that is I so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Like one, I'm, I'm filming another one about like how to, cause people have asked, well, how do you handle negative people? Yeah. And it's so interesting because this is energetics is about embodiment, by the way. It's really more about embodiment um, and about like alignment, right? Yeah. And we're so addicted to how. Yeah. But I share my stories of like how for myself, just being a certain way helps a person not be negative. Yeah. But I don't know how I'm how? doing it. Like I, I, you know, it's it's such a left brain thing to ask, right? Like how, yeah. how, how? <laughs> But really, it's like who, who are you? Yeah, exactly. That handles negative people. If you can really find that, then yeah. you'll handle them like nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that would be a great tip for somebody. everybody. <laughs> What is it? I'm sorry. That would be a great tip for everybody to just that. That's what I kind of go into, but I had to describe it with um, another like um, real situation with a client of mine. Yeah. And and just by her changing her own perception of herself and radiating yeah. that energy, this negative Nelly in front of, in front of her just yeah. left her alone. Just walked away. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Because the energy. The energy is no longer compatible, right? It's no, no exactly, longer exactly. In, in coherence in some way. So, and that's that's a hard pill to swallow because you're just like, wait a minute. You mean I'm compatible in my energy with this experience? Yeah. Yeah, you mm. are. Mm. Right? And you're like, okay, I got to take a look at this. That's the mirror, huh? That's the mirror, yeah. 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 And you and they're negative for a reason. They're usually there's um, usually a, they're usually wounded, hurt. Yes, you know, there's a lot yeah. behind that. Yes, like, yeah, trauma. yes, and, um, exactly. Yeah, I have, exactly. I have a couple of friends that I I pick up all these things that they say, and I'm, and I I stay neutral. I I don't take it you know personally because I've yeah. learned that, and mm -hmm. um, I'm like, oh Lord, they got you know a long ways to go. Oh, you know, and uh, 
you know, and I just I was like, oh, okay. And and one friend said, I am so glad that you're my friend because he doesn't have many because he keeps oh. saying these negative things and and I'm like, hey, you know, it's it's I kept saying you're fine, you're fine. No, I'm not. No, I'm not fine. I'm like, well, I mean, that's that's your that's your um mindset and that's your perspective. I'm saying you're fine. You know, you just need mm-hmm. to calm down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, because I love you. He's like, <laughs> you know, they are so. our greatest teachers, though. That's for sure. You know, like, yeah. 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 People are really <laughs> our greatest. That's for sure. Gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This was really a lovely, lovely interaction. And I want to thank you for, you know, for inviting me and having me well, over. And- thank you for being here. It was yeah. such a pleasure to talk to you again. Yeah. Again. Thank you. <laughs> and like minded, like minded. Yeah. Souls again. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Ah, very nice. Thank you very much for taking the time. And (laughs) we'll be seeing everybody on the fast track track. next time. (laughs) Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.